and we are back. This is uh welcome back to the you this is the YouTube and the Spotify episode. Yep. So this is uh yeah, man. Thanks for being here with me today. We've Indeed. we've talked about a lot of stuff today, and uh it's been very informative. I'm sure people are gonna have a good time listening to the uh for the full episode, go to patreon.com slash Johnny Woods Comedy, and yeah. you guys can watch the full the full episode. Where we get into the juice. That's um, the Neil deGrasse Tyson segment. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> it definitely was. And sometimes, I know we talked about this earlier, but sometimes you get flagged on YouTube for not being an expert on something and talking about it. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, that's all comedy and podcasting is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, where where are we going to go? Right. If we can't go to YouTube <laughs> right. to just say fucking crazy shit into a microphone. <laughs> Why do we exist if, they, yeah. if we can't do that? Like, come on, man. Right, let me guess about physics. Exactly. <laughs> and, and quantum physics and time travel. Yeah. Let me speculate on what I think that is. Yeah. Why can't In Nate peace. order 300 pounds of sulfur ammonium nitrate? Huh? Why can't he order 3,000 candle wicks? For science. For science. For science. And the FBI has got to kick in his door. You, you know, know what I mean? It's like, crazy. Just because I don't got a lab coat. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Where's your credentials? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is off to a good start. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, nah, I feel like it's good to do, uh, it's good to, after you start talking to somebody for a little bit, you get comfortable, you forget the microphones and the cameras are on, mm. and you just kind of be yourself <clears throat> and, you know, and just shoot the shit. So that's all podcasting is at the end of the day. But this, I wanted to talk more about you in this episode, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you, you've been around for 12 years in this comedy game, and you've done some big things, like you've worked with like Roy Wood Jr., you've worked with Emma, who, who else? Just tell me some, oh. some of the people you've worked with and some of the stuff you've done in your career. Um, Roy Wood Jr., most recently, a, that's my that's guy. That's a big one. That's a good one. It's uh, a great credit to have. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Good person to know. Um, Miss Pat, Miss Pat too. Yeah, um, I wanted to say Lunell, but it was it's Miss Pat. I work with Lunell you work with Lunell also. Yeah, yeah. Um, who's the craziest person you ever worked with? And you were like, I can't believe this is this is happening right now. You ever got surprised that you were like the one picked to do the gig? Well, I think the the last time I felt like that was um. It was a long time ago, for real. I was working with, um, I was on a show with Kenny Howe, and um, it was supposed to be Tyler Craig, rest in peace. And <clears throat> that that show, well, and my homeboy Larry Starks was on it. That was my guy. Um, we was the openers, though. But uh, to be on a show with Kenny Howe, and, you know, I remember watching him on Def Comedy Jam. Yeah. And... You know, like that being one of the guys that actually connected with me um, to the point where I was trying to repeat his stuff at school. Yeah. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And then on that same show was another guy uh, named he, he, uh, Corey Zooman Miller. I remember seeing him on Def Comedy Jam too. And, you know, I look up and he's like walking backstage and we on a show together. Like, yeah. That was that was probably that time for me. That I was think. surreal, yeah. huh? Yeah. Um after that though, like I, I mean, I I just started like feeling like, oh yeah, like I mean, I'm I'm a comedian too. These is peers now. Yes, you know what dude. I mean? Yes, like, yeah. When you finally break, yeah, that's when you I don't know how at, <clears throat> at what point in each person's career that, that happens, but at some point you kind of like shake off your outer shell and like you just you're like, oh. I guess I am part of this whole thing. Like mm -hmm. they let me in too. Mm -hmm. They let me in for free. They invite me back. I'm on the I'm on the bill. Like Yeah. Yeah, I I think a, a most cuz I was just talking to some comedians about this in Columbus over the weekend. I was out at the Attic. Shout out to the Attic Columbus. Great great fucking venue. But I I was out there and I was I was talking to somebody and uh it was to the tune of um essentially dude, I'm so stoned right now. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about. What what were we talking about? Well, I take I, in addition, you was talking about when I'm feeling like I can't believe this is happening. Oh yeah, yeah. So a hundred percent, we all suffer with imposter syndrome because I was telling oh, yeah. somebody else that too, and they were like, "Oh yeah, a hundred percent agree." Yeah, every comedian is like, 
what am I, is this, uh, yeah, we second guess, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we're always nervous before we go up on stage, no matter how long mm -hmm. we've been killing it, no matter how long you've been doing it. Like, it doesn't matter how many, you're like, I, I kill with these jokes a hundred times, but I still don't know what's going to happen tonight. Right. It's like, that's, but that, I think those are the best comics. The ones that have that mentality where you're not so sure, but well, yeah. you have to have ultimate confidence, yeah. but there's like some line in between when you go out there because there's, you don't know. Yeah. I feel like for me, that that's where my nerves come from. Like my, it's not that I'm afraid to, to go tell jokes in front of, or talk in front of people. Like my nerves come from, is it, how's this shit gonna be received? Yes, more than anything. Yes. You know what I mean, like because you know you're coming from a place of like being funny and stuff. But most of the times, especially earlier on in our career, when we're practicing this stuff, it's to like bar shows and open mics. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, people can take you serious or think that it's just not as controlled as a comedy club is what I'm getting at. So it's, right. it's harder to understand the level of. Um, I think the level of kind of authority that you have towards the audience when you're in a comedy club versus when you're in a situation like that, like right. a bar show or something. Well, you're infringing at a bar show. And I don't I, I always feel like that. I don't yeah. care if it's we been are. on a flyer on the front door for <laughs> two or three months. No one like, gives a fuck. Yeah, like you're infringing <laughs> yeah. at a bar show. Like Yeah, dude. So like for anybody to be listening at a bar show is a win to me. It's a privilege. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. you pretty much talking over somebody who's trying to drink or drown their sorrows. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So. That's like the first stair step, too, is and in, into becoming like a real comic is doing all those bad shows. And then over time, you just start to get those people who hated you to laugh at you. Mm -hmm. And they're like, fuck, this guy's this guy's right. Yeah. He's got a point. Or, you're going somewhere, kid. Yeah, dude. The guy at the end of the bar. Yo, you're going <laughs> to. Yeah. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be something, kid. How could I forget a face like that? going to see you in the pictures. <laughs> see you in the big time, kid. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude, that's great. No, um, I, I, I got I, I to gotta add to that. Okay. Because I got to hang out one night with... Um, with that guy there. <laughs> so Oh, Dave Chappelle. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um I was opening for Tony Woods. Oh yeah. And um I, I didn't know it at the time, but like Dave's sister was sitting right in front of the stage and I'm like riffing with her and like kind of poking fun at her or whatever. Like how I always do, but from a we on the same side type of perspective. Yeah. I wasn't making fun of her. You're just doing I'm crowd saying. work. You're just fucking around. Yeah. Just fucking around. And, you know, she seemed to be enjoying my set or whatever. And then I found out once Tony goes on, you know, once he recognized who she was and, oh, that's my friend's sister. He, you know, or something to that effect. And I'm like, oh, shit. Is that, is that Dave's sister? <laughs> And you know, cause and uh, the whole night I'm like, bro, I hope, I hope, you know, this turns into me getting to uh, go out to the little to the little spot. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Yellow Springs like, and perform. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I hope, I hope this happens and shit. So that was in the back of the mind the whole time and shit. Like, and then yeah, like after the show was over, he's like, hey man, you wanna you wanna go meet my buddy? I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. So uh, yeah. <laughs> And it happened in the car with his sister, and we rolled out, hung out in Yellow Springs at the little shack or whatever. And Fuck yeah, dude. Dave poured us a drink and shit. Like, that was dope. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, yeah, dog. Man. That's surreal. That yeah, was, that was yeah. definitely yeah. one of those times. Dude, he's like a celebrity, like a big time celebrity, and he lives right here in, Ohio, in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, it's pretty that's insane. crazy. Yeah. That is surreal. Like, yeah. yeah, I was there that night and that weekend, and you killed. And do you want to hear a funny story about? when I was there with Tony Woods. What happened? So I was there and Friday night I pulled up and I was like, um, I just asked Tony, I was like, hey man, is it cool if I uh, come back tomorrow and do photography, like off stage photography of you guys? And then I like, send you the pictures. And he was like, oh yeah, that's great. And he was kind of drunk. It was like right after the shows, the first mm -hmm. show Friday. 
he was like, that's great. You're a photographer. And I was like, yeah. And so he was like, follow me. I want you to get a picture with me and Chappelle's mom. And I didn't have my camera, but I was too scared to tell him that I didn't have my camera. Yeah. So he's just like, follow me. And I was like, well, Tony, I was trying to tomorrow. He's like, come on. And he's like, <laughs> so he's like, fuck it. I follow him into the showroom and he takes a picture with Chappelle's mom and I have no choice. So I had to take it with my iPhone. With your phone and so shit. So I pulled it out and took it with my phone and then I just slipped out of the room and I was like, thanks, Tony. It's nice to meet you. And I just walked away. <laughs> and I felt so awkward. <laughs> I felt so dumb that I couldn't, I didn't have the balls to tell him. <laughs> right. That, like, this is my, this is a fucking iPhone. Anybody can take this picture. You want me to take it with your phone? Tony, give me your phone so you have it. Because I'm a photographer. At least you can have it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> give me your phone. I couldn't tell if he was fucking with me or if he was just like, just wasn't comprehending what I was trying to convey to him. The next night I come back. <laughs> right so i come back and i got my camera around my neck mm -hmm. looking real peter parkerish and um i'm with a bunch of other comics in the lobby and mm -hmm. fucking Chappelle walks in the door the saturday night oh the next shit. night and he's like what's up fellas and we're all like what's up dave and then he walks to the bar and gets a drink yeah and like as soon as like he walked in though bro i like took my camera off and set it on the bar and like scooted it away from myself mm -hmm. <laughs> I God. He's like, I don't want to be the guy with the camera. He's like, right. get that fucking guy out of here. Right. So I was like, S -s as far as I could yeah. get, turn around from it. Like, yeah. So, like, and Erica was like, hey, no pictures tonight since Dave's in the building. Yeah. And I was like, All right, I'll fucking throw this thing in the trash. Yeah, I'll stomp on the fucking <laughs> lens right the, here. I'll break the film. Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Was, What's your, like, be honest with you. Like, how do you feel about yourself? <laughs> Dude, terrible. When he walks in, like, and you... Oh, about... Uh, like, when you see, like... Because I always feel super duper awkward. Like... Yeah. I never know what to say. Yeah. I think you I just got to be cool. You know what I mean? Yo, yo, well, hey, how, motherfucker? We, just, like, how we you... just try to keep talking. That's what we did. We just try to keep our little whisper conversation in the lobby during the show. You know, yeah. there's a group of comics standing in front of the photos, like, you know, like we have been for yeah. years, just talking. And like, we just went back to it and tried to act like it wasn't going on. And then he went into the green room and then just smelled like weed for the rest of the night. And we didn't see him again. Yeah. <laughs> we could only assume what was going on. Man, it, for me, I, I always, I remember, um, I remember one night being at the Funny Bone and he popped up. I think um, it was uh, D.L. Hughley was in town. And, um, dude, I, I, I never, I, I never know what, like I said, to say. Or, or, or am I supposed to say anything? You know what I mean? Yeah, so I don't think I, we I, are unless I, we're asked questions. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, I remember him popping up at the Funny Bone and, you know, we was outside on the patio smoking or whatever. And then he came out on the other side and was over there smoking. And and uh, this 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 lady friend of mine, she was like, come on, I'm about to go introduce you. And I'm like, bitch, if you don't get your hands off Hell me. No. Like, like, I, right. Yeah, because I'm like, no. Like, like, what are you, my agent? My yeah, handler? Get like, the no, fuck out of here. Don't, don't. So that you can introduce yourself to him? Yeah, don't, don't drag me, me over in the- As a bargaining <laughs> chip? <laughs> yeah. I got this comedian here for you. Yeah, like, no, don't do that. By the way, I'm Angelica. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's what it is. It's just, yeah. you just want to be standing in front of them. Yeah, you know, like, dude. no, I'm not ready for this right now. I'm going to Let me watch stupid. it from over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Well, yeah, he's such a different level too, comic that it's like, I don't know. I uh, he just did a, uh, he just did some. He's such a humble guy, and just to add to the fact that he is, he just did the attic, which is only a ninety seater. Mm -hmm. He just did two shows there. Yeah, um, and that's that's crazy, bro. And all the comics said he was such a nice guy. Talked to every single comic and staff member that worked there. Like, yeah, super cool guy and humble guy. So. I mean, that's just the test of his character because even I remember hearing Joe Rogan say that back in the day, whenever he was on his hiatus, they would just hear like randomly that he would just be at like a club or a, a whatever, like of any venue in the United States. He'd just be dr driving around the country, like mm -hmm. just doing shows, not even advertising it. Wow. Before it was like pre social media, too. Yeah. You know, so he would just pop in and just do whatever he wanted, wherever he wanted. He's just been a, I don't know, bro, he's been like an elusive character. Like throughout the comedy 
game. It's I'm glad to see he came back though. He's like the ultimate underdog story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He mm -hmm. really stood up for what he believed in. Yeah. And then he ended up getting paid off in the end. Mm -hmm. He got what he deserved. Yeah, and it's just so dope to have him like like within arm's reach of our scene. You yeah, know dude. what I'm saying? Like, when he opens that club in Yellow Springs, that could be big opportunities for anybody in this town. Yeah. Anybody who's been busting their chops for long mm -hmm. enough to get a spot there. Mm-hmm. It's just something to look forward to, I think. You know I what think I mean? so, too. Um, it's, it, 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 we were talking about this earlier. I don't know if it was in this, the YouTube version or if it was in the other, what we were doing before this, but Ohio is just popping right now. Mm -hmm. Columbus, Dayton, Cincy. I'm sure Cleveland is doing great too. Those are just the scenes that I'm oh, like yeah. involved in. So many killers, so many um, like big known people starting to pop through and check out the Midwest and work yeah. with these guys and these gals that are from around here. And so, yeah, man, it's a it's a it's a blessing, dude. It is. It, it like we we are in a for real a privileged position yeah. to be like right here and. In in the fucking shadow of like Dave Chappelle, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude, it's the, crazy. The dude saying like, "All right, I'm I'm gonna be, open a club here," and he kind of kind of has control of the other club here too. I mean, it doesn't because he does, has no involvement in it whatsoever. But right. just it's like he's kind of cornered the market, if you will. Mm -hmm. which is just going to cause more and more clubs to pop up around here. Exactly. Like, if you want your market like to be cornered, like, why not, like, somebody who's going to be you talked need, about as one of the greatest? You need competition. It's just like Pepsi and Coke or Pizza Hut and Domino's or Tupac and Biggie. Mm -hmm. There's always has, has to be a rivalry of some sort. So you need competing clubs. Mm -hmm. And if you own all the competition, you, then you corner the market. Yeah. So... I, I I'm excited to see what happens. Good for him. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> to see what happens. I, I am too, dude. Like I can't. I think I I can't see how that is gonna hurt the scene here locally. You not, know, I, not, I feel a, like bit. I not a bit. Not a bit, dude. If anything, it's it. just gonna give people who, like I said, who are funny starting out or who've been doing this for a while and who who could use the opportunities. It's gonna yeah. start giving them opportunity, and that opportunity could come in any form. You don't know who's going to knock at your door because they seen you or heard you or... Right. You know what I'm saying? And consistency is key, dude. You said mm -hmm. that to me earlier. Consistency is 100% key. And, like, people talk, you know? Yeah. They do, bro. And they know who's they know who's worth it. And, like, there's a, a strong scene, dude, in Ohio. So I'm just looking forward to, like... I can't even imagine what the future is going to hold because I never thought it was going to... The scene was going to be as good as it is. Yeah. As... as you're right, bro. We're very privileged to be part of this whole situation. Yeah. I mean, and to kind of backtrack, you you asked me earlier what it was like when I started versus now. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, there was no... So I started at Wiley's. Wiley's was my home club. And I know that prior to me doing stand-up, Chappelle used to pop up in there all the time. Yeah, and and I think that was and it's I'm, we're kind of tying this shit up now. Like, yeah, I'm connecting these dots that I was laying out earlier. I think part of the anxiety that I was always having, like when I would be in those same spaces as him, was I think when I first started out. Like all I wanted was to have my first Chappelle sighting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, and but why? He's like Bigfoot. But why? Because I ain't done <laughs> shit. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, I saw him. You got a picture? Nah, man. It's like yeah. shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did. You ain't see him. You ain't see him. That at ain't all. him. You didn't see his ass. But then, like, then everybody I knew, people who were so far disconnected from comedy. Was running into him like everywhere, left and right at the everywhere. gym on the trail in Yellow oh, Springs. Dude. He smoked yeah. weed with me. Every yeah, I was piece. at the movies going to see yada yada yada, and I turned around and he was behind me getting popcorn. He literally became like three fucking Sasquatch, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he was my Sasquatch, like absolutely, He's bro. A mythical beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, yeah, <laughs> you heard it here. That's what, it, like, so. <laughs> What do you say to the Loch Ness monster? You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, what do you got my three dollars? 
<laughs> That's what you say. The that, that, what are you, <laughs> bro? So yeah, I, I say all that. I think that's what <laughs> led to a lot of that anxiety around meeting him. Because then, like when I was actually formally, damn, formally introduced to him, a lot, it, it, a lot of it went away. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now I can like be in the same space and not feel like I'm on fucking fire. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, well, because you feel like you're underclassed when you're around somebody like that. Everybody does naturally. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like there's a pecking order in life, even outside of comedy, where you're like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a multimillionaire who's like taking all of his dreams and turned them into reality. And it's like, mm -hmm. I want to rub elbows with that guy and see how the, you know, how the fuck that happened. You know, success yeah. leaves clues, though, and most people don't get that opportunity to be like, Hey man, give me a little good a bit of game right now from the greatest of all time. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? The people that are in his camp and close to him are very, very blessed, right? To have that mind oh, yeah. around. Cause you could see that he's now starting to produce specials for other people mm -hmm. and podcasting. And so, you know, definitely somebody who's business savvy on top of maybe yeah. one of the funniest people who've ever lived. And that's yeah. So, you know, how do you approach that? You know what I mean? Yep. Like you very, know, very difficult. It's Unapproachable, even you could say he's kind of unapproachable. Well, and that's the thing. Like the dude makes himself very approachable. Yeah. Like, I, like you, you have to be to be on a level of of who he is and and live in Ohio. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's a weird like, choice. When you can live any fucking where, you literally know? So, anywhere on the planet. Yeah. yeah like I, I think. And then, and that's another part too, not wanting to breach that. Like, because most people who live in Ohio, who who live around here know why he chooses to be here because he don't like that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I guess you never want to breach that shit. At least me. You know, no, I know me personally, I, I don't know. I know what you're saying. I mean, it's not, and, hey, it's, it's hard, dude. It's hard. So, at the end of the day... You know, you got to give people their space. And yeah. like, that's the most respectable way to approach it, I yeah. think, ever, is just be like, all right, I don't really, I can't even think of a good question to ask this person right now. But someday, if that opportunity arises, which it's cool to, it's cool that that's even a possibility. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how many, how many people can say that? Like, Com comedians get put in situations like that all the time. And it's like, I don't know if we were talking about this. We, we mentioned this earlier, but like imposter syndrome and just not knowing if it's, we're in the right place at the right time, or we're really supposed to be here. And this is all for mm -hmm. a purpose. Like you, you kind of, you can lose sight of, uh, you can lose sight of, of like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you get caught up in all that shit and mm -hmm. you don't want to be like, I don't know. You just don't want to be taken the wrong way, especially meeting somebody like that. If yeah. you don't have the kind of credits that you yeah. feel that are respectable. I don't know. Like I get real self-conscious too, when it comes to like celebrities or, mm -hmm. Just another level of celebrity, someone that you also admire and look up to, mm -hmm. it's it's on top of being a celebrity, right? You know, right? I don't know. I I I, I think I deal with the whole imposter shit often. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I I relate to that shit like a motherfucker. Like, yeah, I have it deeply rooted in me, bro. Like I all the time. Like I damn near got like got to get a compliment from somebody or something every now and then just to feel. And I hate that I want validation from other people, but that is part of what being a comedian is like, we're all missing something. <laughs> we're all missing a little part mm. of ourselves. So we want this attention. And then if you're good and you get good, it becomes addictive as fuck mm. to write jokes and to like travel and hit the road. And like, yeah, it's such a crazy thing, dude. And it will fucking wrap you up in its finger. Mm comedy man and it's like you don't want that to be your whole personality either right but it ends up being right. sometimes you know i mean you are what you are you know what i mean yeah and i have a life <laughs> i have a life outside of this yeah. obviously that i respect and cherish and love but when i'm in it man it's fucking i don't know but don't you have to it's like you gotta like kind of you gotta have to be all in yeah, dude, you, know you have mean? to be. Yeah. Like, in order, like, to see any type of real growth. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, and that's the crazy thing is, like, you do want growth. And you see a lot of comics have that mentality that they're trying to grow and get better as a joke writer and as a person. And so mm -hmm. that having that 
it's all mental health, dude. It's all like, that's why I got Absolutely. I don't, somehow I just keep going back to that in my head <clears throat> for myself personally. And then it seems like a lot of people can relate to that. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like mental health driven. Like we want attention, but we also don't, we also don't want you to say anything after. <laughs> Yeah. Even if it was good, just say it was good and that's it. Yeah. We don't want to talk anymore. Yeah. Like, thank you. And then that's it, you know? And so, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, bro. I totally relate, like, to what you're saying, too. It's like, you just kind of, you feel like, is it is it your past? Or is it, because maybe that's it for me. Is it for you? Like, is it like, do I deserve this? Like, because of where I come from? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's I think that's yeah. it for me. Is that it for you? You think? I to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of it is that, like, <clears throat> you know, you. A lot of it's like, no man, like this is good to me. Like, mm -hmm. I I like this. I enjoy this. This is good to me. But good things don't happen to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. That's a yes, that's exactly what I was trying to describe. Yeah. So Yeah, I, it, it's always there, man. Like yeah. it's out in the back of my mind like, you know, like Yeah. Is this you it's, it's I crazy. don't know. No, it's, it's crazy you say that because I had that mentality for so long and then I've reversed it recently and started trying to think of the best possible outcome because of this Damon Dash video that I saw, a motivational video that I saw. And he was talking about like, I want to be around people that think about the best possible outcome. I don't want to be around no pessimist or anybody mm. that's talking about how we're going to fucking fail. It's like, I only right. want people that are talking to me and in my business circle and my life circle to talk about positive things and good outcomes. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's what I'm trying to reach at all times. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, maybe that is a good way to think of it. And then, dude, all this stuff started floating in. Mm -hmm. It's like out of nowhere. I like have a couple of videos hit on TikTok. I had yeah. like a bunch of opportunities happen out of nowhere that I didn't just like right place, right time opportunities yeah. doing shit that you wouldn't necessarily normally do. You happen to be there and then you happen to meet somebody that's like gives you an opportunity and like, mm -hmm. yeah, bro, the universe will throw it to you. I think if you work hard enough for long enough, it's like it has to have some sort of balance like energy. Right. You said that earlier. Mm. Energy um, doesn't ever not it can't exist. be created or destroyed. Can't it's, be created yeah, or destroyed. Just yeah, it just is. And if you put enough energy towards something, it will snowball eventually, mm -hmm. right? And that's mm -hmm. that's a fucking that's a great way to end this podcast. I think. Do you have Absolutely. anything else? Do you have any dates coming up? This will be out on YouTube in a couple of days. Oh yeah, let's um, plug your dates, and you guys can watch this full episode at patreoncom slash Comedy. You guys can watch Nate talk me into fucking. <laughs> crazy we talked about all kinds of crazy we shit do, you guys will talk. like it but yeah. nate do you have anything coming up um yeah barno blaine and chillicothe that's on october shout out Lori graves love you she's the best seventh i want to say october 7th Barn i might be Barn wrong about blaine. that but well, i'll find out and and update it if it ain't right and okay. then uh september 24th i'll be in cincinnati at uh thompson house you guys go see nate Go follow Nate Washington at Badlands ENT on Badlands all social ENT. media. You can watch this full episode on patreon.com slash Johnny Woods Comedy. You're the best. Thanks for watching the Morning Woods. Peace out.